Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, and as I mentioned in the previous video, I've been messing around with Coruscating Elixir Nova EK for the past few days, and at this point the character has come to its conclusion at level 92, having taken on all the current endgame, and uh, mapped pretty damn nicely and efficiently. So, there's basically two different versions of the character because it's kind of versatile. Uh, all it takes is a few gem swaps and a weapon, and we go from a clear speed mapper to a heavy hitting uh, boss killer. So I'll show you just real quick a bit more of the end game gameplay here, uh, which is, you know, just a shaped shore doing a Chiyula breach. You know, you zoom around pretty damn quick, you get your vile haste going rather quickly, and you steamroll things really quite efficiently and uh, quickly. And after that, I'll also show you guys just pretty much all the current um, Endgame boss fights, which is, you know, Guardians, Shaper, Uberitsiri, and Chiyula. But I just wanted to give a quick demo of the clear speed because it has been pretty damn nice as a character. Probably the funnest character I've played on Breach so far, which, um, you know, did definitely surprise me. But before I get into the um, final boss fights and all that and go over all of them, I do want to uh, just show you exactly what I mean by two versions of the build and show you the actual setups involved in one and then the other. So these are just a few little boss kills and also what a Chiyula clear looks like. This is currently in the more boss killing sort of setup. So I do have um, a real dagger on and the right flask that I'm talking about as well as a few gem swaps. And uh, yeah, Chiula breaches, you know, I've cleared uh, two or three of them and it was really smooth, really efficient. The only problem is Fizz Reflect, kind of, but uh, that is also solvable and I'll talk about that in a second. And then the single target is absolutely disgusting um, with the right setup. So I do want to go over the two different uh, setups just before I uh, show you all of the kills and all that. Um, basically we got to level 92, you can see on the left hand side there, and uh, the main way we did that was using a bright beak, that's for a lot of attack speed for your shield charge. Um, in our overall setup, we're running faster projectiles, which you don't do for bosses, um, running pierce, and added chaos. Now those are three things that get changed quite routinely, but that is our mapping and, uh, you know, easy boss killing setup. Besides that, we have Echo, level 3 in power, and a level 21 EK that we vowed. And on top of that, we also run a silver flask in our flask 1 slot, and uh, that gets changed for a diamond flask when we go for serious boss killing damage. And for serious boss killing, we swap uh, faster projectiles for void manipulation, slower projectiles in for pierce, and controlled destruction in for added chaos. All in all, that gives us by far the biggest single target damage that the build is capable of. And uh, just as a quick example, we go um, from 89k single target, uh, well, tooltip DPS in town, and I suppose we can check that, uh, 170 with flasks, and then we put on our dagger and the rest of the setup, and that currently puts us up to 124,000 tooltip, but there's a lot more hidden damage in the uh, chaos damage multipliers, and with flasks we go up to 255,000, but diamond flask obviously isn't counted in the tooltip, so it's a lot bigger than that. Uh, in the end, Path of Building has us at like 6 million DPS with everything up at the same time. So that's our single target setup, and of course, you know, Slow proj can get you in trouble, so we use Pierce uh, whenever we think we need to. Uh, added Chaos sometimes goes in over Control Destruction if we're afraid of Reflect, because uh, with Control Destruction, Reflect hits pretty fucking hard on us. Uh, all in all, there's you know a two different setups you can swap between. And as well as that, I did have Intuitive Leap and Overcharged while mapping almost the entire time. I only took it out uh, just recently for the last level while I was doing some shaper runs and all that, and respect just a little to grab a, a bit of um, reliability in my build for stun, since I'm not using an Eye of Chiula, which I do highly recommend. So when we go into our heavy hitting boss killer setup, you can notice we're a lot slower uh, in movement speed primarily because we don't have an onslaught flask and we don't have anywhere near as much attack speed from the weapon. But the damage becomes pretty damn incredible. And with all flasks up, we're still very tanky, uh, which, you know, is most of the time. And 
All we have to really worry about in some fights is keeping up coruscating elixir and usually killing things within the duration of the Vinktars. That can be a bit of a problem sometimes. If you don't kill them, you know, within the duration, then you might lose quite a lot of damage from your shock and as well as that, mana sustain is a large part of where we get... Um, our mana from, the Vinktars itself. Now, the Phoenix kill, very smooth, I'd say, for what it is. Hydra kill, still actually surprisingly smooth, because like I mentioned, poison isn't the be-all, end-all of our build. It is a little bit of an afterthought, because we hit really hard, uh, straight up, and that's why Hydra dies fairly quick. When we have all the flasks up and get our crits going, um, each individual crit is hitting for like 5% of our life. So it ends up being really quick when the right setup comes along, but um, you you know, the amount I had to dodge and all that, I couldn't get too much insane DPS in while standing still, but it's a very quick kill and pretty damn smooth, especially for a poison-based build. It um, actually has some pretty girthy damage. As you can see right there, I sacrificed some damage taking uh, for the deeps, and it went really well. And uh, yeah, you know, Hydras are very manageable on this fight, or on this character. Only takes, you know, maybe a minute instead of the uh, 10 seconds that the, well, poison vulnerable bosses take. So that's really not a big deal. Now before the uh, actual Uber Itziri fight, I'll show you, I just thought it was kind of funny to show you regular Itziri. Uh, a couple of the bosses, this is the trio on regular Itziri. It's kind of a novelty. And uh, that's Itziri on regular Itziri. This, however, is Uber Itziri and uh, the Vials to start with. And the damage, as you can see, pretty damn insane. Like I said, when the crits come in, you can see they're absolutely chunking the health. And then, of course, there's some pretty sweet poison damage afterwards as well. Uh, the trash, pretty damn smooth. Uh, Coruscating Elixir, gonna be up 100% of the time. Pretty much all flasks are up 100% of the time. The trio, however, get a little hairy if you don't um, dodge well enough, quick enough. And this is one of the fights where a stun immunity like Chiula would go a really long way. Uh, likewise, for its eerie, Chiula I think would be great here too. And there's a bit of difficulty in managing your flasks. So you kind of always have to have at least a flask up for this fight because otherwise you're not poisoning and Vinktars goes a very long way to helping us sustain mana, life and kill one of the uh, split phase adds. So you really want to save the Vinktars there but you do really want a flask all over the time, all over the place for its eerie as well. That said, uh, I tried to come to some sort of middle ground and always have Sin's Rebirth up, potentially um, Coruscating Elixir every now and again and maybe its Siri flask itself just for some um, leech and sustain. However, you know, we did like four Uber series runs and they're all pretty damn smooth. I think I died a couple times. It really wasn't an issue. It's a pretty decent uh, Uber series farming build. Next up is Chimera and as we all know he's poison immune but that's not a very big deal at all and all the poison and chaos damage that's coming from these adds not a big deal for our coruscating either. Coruscating is up pretty much 100% of the time, as are most flasks, and we one-shot these adds. So it was all rather smooth. I've done a few chimeras now, and they're all pretty damn smooth. Did die a couple of times though, because smoke phase, not very good for this type of character. And what else? Um, I think I forgot to press my flask once on one of these phases. In any case, just gotta get through the smoke phase, pop your flasks, and uh, chimera should die pretty quickly, but that really depends on uh, how well set up we are. He's poison immune, but once you get the flasks going and a few of the crits happening, he dies pretty quickly. You can see for this uh, little phase here, we didn't have Vinktars up, and that is a large part of our mana sustain, so I just had to run around and uh, regen through clarity and all that until Vinktars came back up. Uh, because I mismanaged it during the ad phase. Usually though, Vinktars is enough just to... Um, or you'll have a Vinktars up, and you'll kill him during that phase without needing any extra mana regen from uh, standing around. Next up is a Shaper attempt. Um, I did end up killing him, what, I'd say two, maybe three, three times, I think, and two of them were completely deathless. Uh, one of them went just a little haywire, and I died once or twice, I think. 
wasn't too much. It was, uh, it's all pretty smooth. The DPS is really nice for him. And as we all know, the smoother the DPS on Shaper, the easier the fight, because you have to deal with less of uh, all of his crap. So, you know, drop your Wither Totem, get your flasks going, and you really have to pick the best possible time to flask against him and get all your DPS happening. It's when you know you're going to get a good chunk of DPS, because, um... You only have a limited uses of your flasks, especially Vinktars, which is, as I mentioned, our mana sustain. So you want to pop them all when you know you're going to get the five seconds in. And uh, that's usually just about enough time to kill him. And sometimes you'll just have to save a few little uh, flasks for the ad phase, because you need to be able to poison them and also be able to um, sustain mana. So you kill them just by, uh, you know, popping a couple little flasks and getting a few kills down and then you pop your Vinktars which will regen while you're killing the adds but as well as that we do have Vile Clarity in our back pocket ready to go whenever we need to um, it's usually for the ad phase so whenever we need to spam quite a lot like this phase right here uh, you pop your Vile Clarity you sit there at the entrance and spam non-stop and they die pretty comfortably but uh, this little phase here was just going a bit wrong for me uh, if you really need to though, pop the flasks and make sure coruscating is up against these adds because they do have chaos damage and it can get a little shitty if you don't have it up. Um, I did learn that the hard way once. In any case, there's one more fight to show and that's Minotaur. This one had a poison mod, a monster life mod, a cold damage mod, a few crazy things. So I face tanked him as long as I could and then I had to dip out to reset my flasks. And after that, came back in and finished him off. But all in all, with 50% monster life, um, he did die pretty quickly and it's a pretty uneventful fight otherwise. So I'll try my best to summarize the build pretty quickly and efficiently, um, as I've already talked about it in the previous video for the most part, um, but everything's been finalized at this stage. And like I said, there's two different versions of the setup. Most of the time I was running Bright Beak. When you're ready to get serious, get yourself a dagger that has some good uh, spell crit. If you can, attack speed, crit multi, and spell damage. That goes a long way to giving us a bunch of DPS. Uh, the shield I chose was pretty low on energy shield, but I was trying my best to fill out spell crit. Um, at this stage, if I was to rebuild the character, I probably wouldn't take the spell damage. We had more than enough damage. Just get a spell crit shield with, a, you know, 400, 500 ES if you can. Uh, the helm, just 40k damage on the enchant. That thing was pretty cheap. Uh, whereas the prod speed enchant, probably better for you, but it's a lot more expensive. And then we chaos spam the helm to become pretty god tier, especially for hybrid. Uh, gloves, just some stock standard attack speed, you know. Um, ES gloves, the boots, Brian Rot Whalers, they're very nice for the build, and 80% chance to avoid being stunned is what I got a roll on for um, just stun resistance. But if you want reliability in this build, definitely get an IF Chula. Uh, after playing the build, there's no way in hell these stats on this amulet are worth more than stun immunity, so I would recommend that. But at this point, it's been you know, I've gone too far and uh, I survived well enough with my current setup, but you know, I have Chiula a lot better. A presence of Chiula, you know, if you got the currency would be even better. Now we need strength somewhere. So I got strength here as well as some resists. Um, that's basically it for that ring. And chaos damage on this one from an envy roll, managed to roll it myself, pretty damn nice indeed. And then about some reduced flask charges used goes a long way to our flask sustain, and then energy shield and some resists if you can. And then for our chest, I went with a skin of the loyal, because they're cheap, I'm a big fan of this item, uh, plus one level of socketed gems, which gives us 20% overall damage, because there's 10% there, 10% there, so it's a very nice chest, and um, I recommend getting one if you really don't want to invest too much and if you want to go for the coruscating elixir playstyle. That said, if you don't, a shav's probably going to end up uh, being better for you because you can then drop this for something like a witchfire or even um, both of these flasks at once, which would be very nice indeed. But um, yeah, coruscating elixir, I thought it'd be a novelty and it worked out pretty damn well. I was happy with it. Uh, besides that, my flasks were Vinktars with a spell damage roll, added damage to a attacks roll, a Atziri's Promise, a Sin's Rebirth, 
And for the most part, I almost always used the Onslaught Flask because it gives us quite a lot of uh, attack and movement speed and cast speed, and it needs some bullied immunity. The gem link setup for our main one on the left hand side, uh, mix and match whatever you want with however you're comfortable at the time. Fast approach, pretty much always used for mapping, bear in mind, um, but otherwise it's not the greatest damage increase. And uh, added chaos, mostly used for mapping as well. Uh, you'll suffer on reflect if you don't uh, use added chaos and use controlled destruction instead. But when you're ready to get serious, there's your setup uh, for the single targets. Besides that, I guess we're using uh, two auras or two curses, one vulnerability and one proj weakness. Proj weakness is absolutely huge for us. It gives us huge amounts of increased damage and pierce. So I'm running that on blasphemy. And then vulnerability I have on demand attached to orb of storms, curse on hit and power charge on crit. Vulnerability is a huge amount of damage. I only really use it for additional single target though. Uh, our setup for reserving life is clarity discipline and blood magic uh, that allows you to reserve quite a lot of your life and go low life our vile setup vile clarity vile haste and increased duration and our shield charge setup is just shield charge and faster attacks didn't really have enough links to attach fortify and then we have wither spell totem and increased duration and lastly hatred reserves um, the rest of our mana over here it is a really big uh, damage increase especially when you factor in a series flask but it's also good for shattering and just yeah there's not much else you can really do with your mana Besides that, there's really not much else to say. We did use the EK Jewel for Nova action. The passive tree, as I already mentioned, uh, a lot of chaos damage, a lot of proj damage. It basically builds itself if you're going to level it. So there's not too much to mention there. Uh, intuitive Leap went a long way for us. So we could grab Melding, Dreamer, and Overcharged. If you're not going to grab Overcharged at all, then it's not really particularly worth it. You probably don't want to go an Intuitive Leap here. But uh, otherwise, I thought it was a pretty nice use of the gem. All in all, EK was quite a lot of fun with the new Nova gem. Um, I do recommend trying it if you haven't tried it at all. It doesn't have to be this variant. You can do some Ellie versions or um, you know different types of characters. Uh, Nova EK, pretty damn good skill, pretty damn fun. And lastly, Coruscating Elixir, totally viable. It will get you a bit dead every now and again, just from a lack of concentration. But uh, hey, it's a nice alternative to Shavs and uh, you know, that's good. The fact that this item became viable and an alternative to shavs now exists for low life builds that's uh, not necessarily just stacking chaos res gear, which can be hard to do. So all in all, the character wasn't terribly expensive. Um, you know, Sin's Rebirth is easily our most expensive item. Uh, the rest can be done on somewhat of a budget. That said, um, yeah, it was a pretty successful character in my opinion and a lot of fun. Hope you guys try something like it or do some EK because uh, it definitely is worth playing right now. That's it for that one. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you next time.